Hey everyone, welcome back and let's write some more neat code today. So today let's solve the problem, largest submatrix with rearrangements. We're given a binary matrix, meaning zeros and ones, and it's of size M by N, so M rows or N columns. And I just refer to these as like rows and columns because it just makes things easier in my opinion. Now, all we want to do here is find the area of the largest sub matrix, AKA rectangle. Like this is a rectangle. This is also a rectangle. This is of course not a rectangle. So it's not a sub matrix. Now, that itself, what I just said, find the area of the largest submatrix, that's actually more challenging, in my opinion, than what we're asked to do. But it's not obvious at first, because in this problem, we're actually allowed to reorder the columns in any way that we want. It doesn't cost us anything. So you can see with the original matrix, the largest rectangle we could form was probably this area of three. But after rearranging like this, we can form a rectangle of area of four. Okay, so how do we solve this problem? Like I said, finding the area of the largest rectangle is actually not easy. Like let's not even consider the fact that we can rearrange the columns. Let's simplify things at least a little bit. How would we even like brute force this problem in any sense? In terms of brute force, we have to think about rectangles in some way. Let's think about it like for every single position, let's consider it like the top left corner and see what's the biggest rectangle. Like from here, obviously nothing. From here, we again, can't really do much. So all we have is this guy. And even then, like brute forcing it is going to be quite challenging. There might end up being a lot of repeated work. Now, if you do want to cut down on the repeated work, you can imagine we're probably going to need to do some kind of nested for loops on this at some point. So a sort of convenient thing to do would actually be to consider each cell like the bottom right of the overall rectangle. And then for every single cell, consider what's the largest rectangle we could make where like this is the bottom right, this is the bottom right, this is the bottom right, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, and let's take another sort of, let's consider the fact that we only have a single row because that's very, very simple. It makes things very, very easy. We'd start here. Okay, we have a one, area of one, cool. Okay, now we have a second one, two in a row. Our streak is two, so the area is two. And then we get to a zero. Okay, that kind of resets our streak. And if there were more ones, we'd kind of accumulate them. That's a very simple example, but we can kind of take that idea of streaks and accumulating and like resetting and apply it in some ways to the 3D example or the 2D example. Okay, so taking those ideas together, let's try to apply it to this example. And remember, we still are not allowed to rearrange the columns. At least that's what we're assuming just to keep things simple for ourselves. Okay, here we have a zero, can't do anything. Zero again, can't do anything. Here we have a one. Now, if we were keeping track of the streak, we know we didn't have anything that came before it. So what is the largest? rectangle we can make where this is the bottom right of the corner. In other words, the reason I'm saying bottom right is when you have a rectangle and the way we're traversing this from top left to bottom right, like this kind of like in terms of arrows and stuff. The reason I'm considering every one of these the bottom right is because bottom right is the last cell. And by the time we get to this bottom right, we've seen all the other cells. We can't really, uh, if we're considering it like the top left, we can't really tell the area of it if we haven't even seen the other cells. Okay, but yeah, this one area of one so far, cool. Now we get to the second row. This is where things get a little bit tricky. I mean, yeah, we could do what we just did in the first row, like say, okay, we have a one here, cool, area of one. We have a one here, cool, area of two now, because this is the bottom right. and. Then we get here, cool, area of three. And yeah, technically that works here. But what if these were ones? How could we know that? Like, how could we keep track of it? Since we've already visited them, we should be able to intelligently know. And this is a technique that we're about to use. It's not like a super specific technique like the sliding window or binary search, but 
I like to still think of this as a category. We're going to do some pre-computing to be able to more efficiently solve this problem. And it's not super obvious, but this is kind of the intuition of why and how we are gonna do it. It's kind of along the same lines of how sometimes for problems you need to compute like the prefix sums, like that's some pre-computation, some pre-work that you need to do, and then you can solve a problem more efficiently. We're doing the same thing here, sort of. So as we're going horizontally, we kind of keep track of consecutive ones. Why not also do that vertically? Why not keep track of consecutive ones? How are we going to do that? Well, let's actually do that on this second example, because this is after we have done the sorting and it actually kind of applies to this example. And then afterwards, I will explain why sorting will actually make the problem easier. And that's before we've actually done the rearranging. And then I'll quickly explain why the rearranging will actually make this problem a bit easier. Here, zero. Cool. Here, one. Here, zero. Okay, so one is the biggest area we can do so far, cool. And now we get to one here. Like I said, we wanna keep track of consecutive vertical ones. So what do we do? Well, we look up, it's a zero. So there's no consecutive ones, it's just a single one here. So don't need to do anything there. And the biggest area we can make from here is also one. Now we get here, this is when things get interesting. We look up, there's a one here. Okay, so we have two consecutive ones. So what we do now is we replace this with a two. This tells us that there were two like ones stacked on top of each other vertically connected. We don't really need to do that with the horizontal case because we can just keep track of that maybe in a separate variable. Now, when we're here, this part is actually kind of tricky because now you realize, yeah, there's two ones stacked here, but there might not be two ones stacked here. So even though the width of this, we can say, okay, we saw a one here and we saw a one here. Okay, so the width of this is two, but what's the height of it? Is it also two? Can we make it two? Well, now we're gonna need to do more work, more variables to keep track of, well, what was the maximum that we've saw? What's the minimum that we saw? Because the minimum is gonna be the bottleneck here, right? If we have something like this, the minimum is the bottleneck. We can't make a rectangle of four. We have to make a rectangle of two. So this is the final step. This is when you can possibly realize that, okay, maybe we should do some kind of additional pre-computing, which is the most common type, sorting. We can sort this. After we have done like the pre-computations, we've computed the heights, and then here, uh, this would just stay as one. Then we're going to take these guys and sort them in descending order. Why descending order? Because we are traversing this from top right or top left to bottom right, or in other words, just from left to right. And like I kind of showed in like the way the rectangles uh, work, like if we have some rectangles like this and we want to maximize the area of these, well, we probably want to start with the biggest one because if we were to do it like the opposite, like think of it in this case here, or maybe this side would be an even better example. We have this. You want to start with the largest height because we know that that's probably not going to be extended as far as we can. But if you take some of the smaller rectangles, you can kind of connect them all the way. Like for uh, this rectangle, what we're going to do is just compute the height like this. We're going to compute the area like this. But for the second one that's slightly shorter, we're going to compute the area like this. And then for the last one, we're going to compute the area like this. So if we were to rearrange these in maybe like this, like small, and then have a really tall boy and something like this, it's not going to be as good because we not we may not be able to extend these as far as we possibly can. For each one of these, we're trying to make the widest rectangle possible. Of course, for a really tall guy, we can't make a very wide rectangle. But for a short one, we can go as far as we can. And the arrangement of that definitely matters. So that's, again, the idea. I think leak code 84, which is a harder problem than this one, but that will that might help you understand why we're doing it this way. So that's pretty much what you need to know uh, to solve this problem. One last thing I'll quickly mention 
is that as we are doing the pre-computation, this is how the algorithm is going to work. We're going to keep track of the heights. At least that's what I'm going to call them. That's what I mean by consecutive vertical cells. So, and so the first row is pretty simple. I'll skip over it. But when we get to the second row, again, we're going to first compute the heights. This is going to be one. This is going to be two. This is going to be one. Then we're going to sort just this row. We're going to then end up, I think, with a row that looks like this. Two, one, one. Ignore uh, the rest of this. Sorry about that. But then we will just iterate over the row again. We'll say, okay, this is a two. So we have a two by one. And of course that two by one is gonna be this. It's gonna go up one vertically because this is a two. Okay, so area of two. Now we're gonna get here one. We know that height can't be two because it's a one. That means above there must have not been a one. So now we take the entire width, two by one. We get an area of two again. Lastly, we get here three the area of this is three by one again. Okay, great. Now we get to the next row. We once again, pre-compute the heights. Okay, uh, we look above. And even though I had a two here earlier, that array that we sort, we're not gonna actually do it in place. We're gonna allocate new memory for every single row before we sort it. And that's because we want to preserve the original matrix because for each cell, we wanna be able to look up and get the consecutive ones because we're allowed to rearrange columns, but we can't just individually swap cells in a, a row. We have to rearrange like the entire column. So that's why we want the original matrix when we calculate the vertical consecutive cells. So here uh, we get two, here we will get a three, and here we have a zero. So we kind of reset it. Even though we had a one up above, can't really do anything here, this is a zero. Okay, now we forget about everything again. We just look at this one row and we calculate the maximum. Well, first we have to sort it, of course. We will sort it in descending order, which would just mean swapping these two. So we end up with a three here and a two here. And then to finish this off, we will say, okay, three, which goes vertically by one, that's gonna be an area of three. Two by two is an area of four, that's our biggest so far. And lastly here, we have zero by three, so that's gonna be a zero anyway. So largest we got was four, that's what we're gonna end up returning. In terms of time complexity, we're gonna end up sorting each row. So let's say the length of each row is uh, n. Sorting a row is gonna be n log n, and the number of rows we have is m. So let's say overall time complexity, m times n log n. Space complexity, I think, is just gonna be for each uh, row that we allocate memory for. So that's gonna be a uh, big O of n, I believe. So now let's code this up, finally. So first thing I like to do is just get the dimensions of every matrix problem. So we take the length of the matrix, we get the number of rows, we take the length of the first row, and we get the number of columns. And we'll have a result, initially I'll set it to zero. That's what we're going to be returning. It's gonna represent the area of the largest submatrix. And then I'm just gonna have a couple nested loops just to iterate over the a grid and we'll do it just like this. We want to compute the heights for every single row. So what I'm gonna do is create a copy of the current row that we're in. In Python, it's pretty easy to do that just like this. So for every single height, we want to possibly update it by looking at the previous heights, which we hopefully computed. So I'll actually create another variable for that. I'll call it previous heights. Initially, I guess it can just be all zeros. So I'll say this times the number of columns that we have. So it's just zeroed out. Um, but in the general case, when would we want to update the height in a particular row? Like at this row, when do we update it? How do we update it? Well, as long as it's not zero and the height above it is not zero as well, we will add them together. And since all the heights are gonna be positive, a more clever way to write that is like this. If the current height is greater than zero or just not zero, then we're going to add them together. Well, what if the previous height was zero? Well, that doesn't like bother us. It'll never be less than zero. So what we can do is just say heights at this column. It's just gonna be added with the previous height. So pretty simple. You could write this out with like a couple if statements, I guess, if you want to, if else. But now we get to the fun part, 
we will now start to compute the areas. But before we do that, let's sort this in descending order. Let's sort the heights in descending order. I'm going to do that like this in Python. It's pretty easy. And this will create a new array. And we definitely want to do that. I'll uh, show you why in a minute. But now we have a new array of the heights that are sorted. So now again, how do we calculate the area? Well, that's not like the hard part. We're going to go over this sorted heights uh, array and we can do that like this for I in range. We could take the length of it, but we know the length of it is just gonna be this columns. And now we wanna update the result maximum area. Of course, we wanna set it to the max of itself and the area of the current uh, rectangle. How do we get that? Well, what's the width of that rectangle? It's gonna be I, plus one, like the current index, because we're going from the beginning of the array up until the current index, and we're considering this as the bottom right. And now this, what's the height? Well, that's of course why we got the sorted heights array. We're gonna take this guy, multiply it by sorted heights at index i. So that's how we compute the area. And now the last thing for us to do is update the previous heights array. What do you think I should set it to? Do you think I should set it to sorted heights? That's going to be kind of weird, isn't it? Because then when we run this piece of code, heights is going to look above it. But if we ended up sorting that array, then a cell might be looking at another cell that's not in the same column, and that's not really allowed. So we're not gonna do that. We're not gonna set this to sorted heights. We're gonna set this to the original heights that we computed because we kind of have to. And so that's the entire code. Let's go ahead and run it to make sure that it works. And as you can see on the left, yes, it does. And it's pretty efficient. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe. If you're preparing for coding interviews, check out neatcode.io. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.